So the answers to test number five. You guys are eagerly awaiting for this, I know. I can feel it. So in test five, I showed you this chart where you had uh, Sun in Libra in the four, I mean Saturn in Libra in the fourth house, Sun in Aries in the 10th house, and both of them are at 10 degrees in these signs. That means they're strongly aspecting each other. Then you had Jupiter and Mars in the third house. Uh, Mars was at 22.5 and Jupiter was at 6.2 degrees Virgo. And this is a Cancer Ascendant chart. And so I asked you, first of all, how this person's uh, Sun Dasha will be. If they were going through a Sun Dasha, you know, how will their Sun Dasha will be if they were living in their mid 20s or 30s? And most of you were actually wrong about this. Most of you said he will face a lot of success. He will face, you know, um, a lot of uh, political advancement in his life, a lot of gains because it's ruling the second, because sun is excelled in, Le in Aries in the 10th house and it rules the second house of wealth for Cancer Ascendant. So this will ha guy will have a lot of wealth or girl, whoever's chart this is. Well, first of all, that is not true. Why is it that it's actually making an exactly opposite impact on this person? So if they're going through the Sun Dasha, it's actually creating a lot of opposition for this person. A lot of, uh, you know, battling into getting to where they want to. They could eventually get there, but not with, not to the sound position that they were looking for. Why? You have Saturn excelled in the fourth house. You have Sun excelled in the tenth house. They're both looking at each other. Not to mention their degrees are exactly at 10 degrees, meaning they're exactly in the same sight of each other. They're not this much. They're not looking at each other like this. They're not looking at each other like Sun is at 10 degrees, Saturn is at 29 degrees. So yeah, there's a little lighter impact. No, they're exactly at the same degrees. So what is this doing is that it's giving a weapon to Sun, let's say a machine gun or AK-47, and then Saturn is also getting an AK-47. And these, both of these planets are enemies of each other. They hate each other. So when two enemies have fire, they're going to battle each other out and nobody will win because they both have the exact same guns. So this person will not be able to get the best sun dasha possible because they're facing so much opposition from saturn saturn is looking at him with the gun as well so that's one thing that is happening in this chart is that this person's sun dasha will not be as good as they thought so the second thing that i asked you was what is happening with jupiter and mars okay and let me tell you one thing that for cancer ascendant you know there's a term called yoga karka Yoga Karka meaning that one single planet is responsible for giving you a kingly yoga, Raj Yoga. Usually a yoga requires two planets, okay? But for certain ascendants, one planet is responsible for giving a kingly yoga. And that is Taurus, Libra, Cancer, and Leo ascendant, you know? And also I believe uh, for Aquarius ascendant as well, they are Aquarius and Capricorn ascendant as well. Uh, there the, with one single planet is able to become a yoga karka. Okay, so for cancer ascendant Mars becomes a yoga karka planet Because it rules the tenth house and the fifth house So yoga karka pretty much means whenever a single planet rules the Kendra and Trikon houses Okay quadrant or the trend houses in an astrological birth chart. So for cancer ascendant Mars ruled the 10th house, Aries, and the 5th house, Scorpio, okay? And so that one, Mars is becoming responsible for giving that Raj Yoga. However, there is something also called Maharaj Yoga. What is Maharaj Yoga? Maharaj Yoga is when a Yoga Karka, meaning single planet that gives Raj Yoga, comes in contact with another planet of uh, of uh, Kendra or Tekon houses, okay? So, in when you have in a Cancer Ascendant, Jupiter, that also controls the ninth house of 
which is a Tricon house, ninth house Pisces, comes in contact with Mars, who is already a Yogacarka planet, it's able to give a very strong Raj Yoga, which can turn into a Maharaj Yoga. So I asked you that term and you guys said, yes, this guy has this yoga. Very good. He also, this person also has something called Guru Mangal Yoga. Guru means Jupiter, Mangal means Mars. And Guru Mangal Yoga creates a teacher that, um, that teaches in a very aggressive manner. They're able to teach with a fight. They're like, no, you're wrong. This is what the lesson is. Okay, so these guys become very, very dominant and very, very profound teachers. Like, you can feel it that, yes, what they're telling us, that's what it is. Okay, so that's what happens. But I asked you, what is it doing in this chart? And you guys said this is creating a very powerful Raj Yoga for this person. They will be very brave. Yes, that is true. It's becoming very courageous for this person. However, this Raj Yoga is not giving them the success that they need. This Raj Yoga is literally at 25% strength. Okay, 25 to 30% strength. There's two reasons why. One, first of all, a yoga, a Raj Yoga or Maharaj Yoga needs to occur either in the Kendra houses or the Trikon houses. So whenever a Yoga Karaka planet is in the Kendra or Trikon, that's when it gives you the, the Raj Yoga results. Second, when two planets make a Raj Yoga, like Maharaj Yoga in this uh, chart, Jupiter and, and uh, Mars, they still need to be in Kendra or Trikon to give the 100% results of this Raj Yoga. Second, even let's say these two planets were in Kendra or Trikon, but look at the degrees. They are so far apart from each other that the Raj Yoga it still doesn't have the strength that it needs. If Jupiter and Mars were within seven degrees of each other, that's when you can really say this person has a strong Raj Yoga. But if that thing occurred in the third house, within seven degrees, it's still not a strong Raj Yoga. It's maximum like 30, 40% of Raj Yoga that this person will receive. And you know, the funny thing is, this is actually one of the alignments of a chart that I looked at about two weeks ago. Because you know, everybody, emails me on my website and you know what I do I look at every single one of them because they give me their situation what is happening and they give me their information so then I message them back and I confirm certain things I don't do consultation but I just for my own studies so somebody had this alignment however their alignment was happening in Gemini ascendant so Sun was excelled in the 11th house Saturn was excelled in the fifth house so you must be thinking oh for Gemini ascendant, Saturn in the house of gain, I mean, Sun in the house of gains excelled. They should be getting all the money. And this person was going through Sun Dasha and they were facing all these opposition. They actually lost their job in this Dasha. So you see why this is important to know, you know, these little, little things can make a big difference. Okay. I mean, most people are in misconception that two excelled planets looking at each other going to give the kingly yoga. Now, if it was two friendly planets like Venus and Saturn, yes, then in that case, you can say they would have excelled, but Venus and Saturn will never face each other as excelled planets. So, you know, this is, these are the small things that you got to worry about. So this was my answer to test number five, and I will see you next week. Another with test number six. Otherwise I'm going to see you tomorrow with another new video. Bye-bye.